Hey guys, sunscreen is on the chopping block yet again. This time it's the ingredient octocrylene, which the public has now become fearful of thanks to widespread media coverage of this ingredient. In today's video, I'm going to be dismantling the many misleading statements that are being made about octocrylene. Earlier this year, a nonprofit group published a paper, benzophenone accumulates over time from degradation of octocrylene in commercial sunscreen products. The authors of this paper have been heavily interviewed on a variety of different news and media outlets, and they've made a lot of really scary statements about benzophenone and octocrylone and the overall safety of sunscreens. Check the description box. I'm going to put all of my references, but the majority of the points and counterpoints that I'm making actually come from a response to this paper in the journal in which it was published um, from an author, Serber. So I will put that reference down below as well. You could read the paper yourself. What is octocrylene? Octocrylene is a UV filter that absorbs UVB, which are the rays from the sun that burn your skin. And it also absorbs some short UVA wavelengths as well. Now it's present in sunscreens to protect you from a sunburn, but it's also present in various cosmetic products to protect the ingredients in that product from degradation from UV rays. What is benzophenone? Benzophenone is a compound that is approved in Europe as a flavoring and fragrance enhancer and a perfuming agent. The nonprofit group Hereticus Environmental Labs went out, got a bunch of sunscreens and tested them for benzophenone. And they found that sunscreens that had the chemical filter octocrylene tested positive for benzophenone. This group makes it seem as though benzophenone should never ever ever be detected in a cosmetic or sunscreen product. But it's not surprising actually that they do detect benzophenone in the sunscreens. Why? Well, when it comes to the synthesis of substances, there are always going to be byproducts in manufacturing. Substances have to undergo a purification process, but it is impossible to get a 100% pure substance from these purification processes. There's always going to be some low level of byproduct remaining. And for this reason, the manufacturers of raw materials have set into place threshold allowable concentrations of these byproducts. And they determine these threshold concentrations after rigorous review of all available safety data on the byproducts. It's not just something that is willing nearly determined. And so yes, there is a low level allowable amount of byproduct that can be present in products. It has been determined to be safe and of no harm to human health. And this is something that undergoes continual revision, scrutiny, etc. So it's not just some oops byproduct that is present. They only zone in on California Proposition 65, which is a legislation that applies largely to the state of California. The California Proposition 65 is not the gold standard of toxicologic safety in product manufacturing. And there is no mention of these other legislative bodies, the European regulatory authorities, which by the way, Europe typically is a lot stricter when it comes to personal care product ingredient safety and what is allowed and not allowed. The second incredibly misleading statement from this group is that there is high percutaneous absorption of benzophenone, meaning basically if you come in contact with it on the skin, it's going to be absorbed into the body. They say upwards of 70% absorption. That 70% number is coming from looking at absorption of benzophenone in acetone. Acetone is a potent penetration enhancer, meaning it helps to drive in the benzophenone. Acetone does this by dissolving the little intracellular bridges between skin cells and the top layer of the skin, allowing for enhanced penetration. Last I checked, there was no sunscreen out there made in acetone. I mean, comment below, are you putting your sunscreen on and following it up with a vigorous coating of nail polish remover? No. The other absorption studies look at rhesus monkeys, show 69% absorption when applied under maximal use under occlusion. And by under occlusion, we're talking about like under a bandage. And we know that that really drives penetration in. Who is putting maximal amounts of sunscreen on and wrapping themselves up in saran wrap? That is not a real world condition. These are things that the authors of this paper are not conveying in their, in their paper or to the public. It's very misleading. 
I could make a similar argument and tell you guys that there is an ingredient, there is a compound in skincare products, a compound that has the potential to cause spasm of your larynx. And then if it gets down into your lungs, which can happen, it can cause lung dysfunction and then subsequent brain hypoxia. This deadly, deadly ingredient is just so dangerous potentially. <laughs> This is how they're framing this. You can drown in water, but is that going to happen from putting water on your skin? No, it's all about the amount, the root of exposure. These are factors in toxicology that you need to weigh in on. And they're not making any comment of this. And they're heavily misleading the public here by saying that 70% absorption of benzophenone from sunscreen. Very misleading. Not to mention the benzophenone that they detected is at the threshold allowable amount, which is incredibly, 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 incredibly low. At this point, I'm sure some of you are like, cool, bye. You've probably already clicked out of this video and hopefully are happily putting sunscreen on, but many of you are still concerned. You're like, I don't care if it's not absorbed significantly. I don't care if it's allowable at low thresholds. I'm still not wanting that coming in contact with my skin because it's dangerous, right? The authors of this paper would have you believe that it is dangerous and that it's a carcinogen and toxic. But the truth is, it's not. The European Food and Safety Authority has deemed benzophenone as not genotoxic or harmful. There are long-term studies in rodents of the carcinogenic effects of benzophenone after oral delivery, giving it to them by mouth at high levels, suggesting possible uh, carcinogenic effects on the liver, the kidneys, and the hematopoietic system. Those are really extreme laboratory conditions where you're talking about giving high amounts of benzophenone by mouth to a rodent. In actual dermal absorption studies, actually putting it on the skin, there is no evidence of cancer. Not to mention the absorption of octocrylin, which they're, they're making the assumption that it's the degradation of octocrylin that is contributing to the detection of benzophenone. Octocrylin is absorbed at incredibly low levels dermally. It's mostly retained in the top dead layer of the skin, the stratum corneum. This group also makes some pretty misleading statements about the endocrine disrupting effects of octocrylin and benzophenone. But what they fail to distinguish is endocrine activity from endocrine disruption. Many things that we're exposed to in our environment, our day-to-day -day life, affect our endocrine activity. Shift work, nutrients, I mean, things that you come in contact with can have an endocrinologic effect. Detecting endocrine activity of a substance in a single test is by no means an indication that the ingredient or the compound is an endocrine disruptor. On the contrary, you have to have a lot of data both in vitro and in vivo. And by that, I mean in like cells in a dish plus in actual lab animal models and human studies to say that something truly is an endocrine disruptor. All sunscreen filters in Europe are approved by authorities under maximum use concentrations. And y'all know from my videos that nobody uses sunscreen in real life at maximal use concentrations. Regardless, all the filters in Europe are approved under maximal use concentrations. And as part of that approval process, they weigh in these endocrinologic safety studies. And again, having a single endocrinologic acti activity or effect in one test does not equate to endocrine disrupting. But this group seriously misleads the media and the public in their statements that benzophenone, octocrylin are endocrine disruptors. They're not really taking into account the entire package of safety and toxicologic data, but rather they zone in on a few studies to support their conclusions. I don't know how this group can actually call themselves scientists, by cherry picking to this extent and then going out into the media and making really, really polarizing, scary statements. Like if it gets on the skin, it can not only trigger rashes, inflammation, hypersensitivity, but also liver cancer or lymphoma. Are you serious? Are you serious? Who is getting liver cancer from banana boat? Who, who?
You have to ask yourself these things. You cannot just rely on these inflammatory news interviews. I mean, who is getting liver cancer from banana boat sunscreen? No one, no one. This is a false statement. It is a false statement. This should be, this should be illegal. Honestly, it really should. So is octocrylin safe? Yes, more than safe. The greatest risk of putting octocrylin on your skin is that you can develop an allergy to it. And if you have an allergy to octocrylin, well then you have to avoid it. In summary, octocrylin is more than safe and this concern that it degrades to benzophenone, there is a threshold safe amount of benzophenone that can be present in products as a byproduct of raw material manufacturing. And that concentration has been heavily vetted and scrutinized. It's not just some willy nilly, okay, we'll let it slide type of thing. Not to mention benzophenone is unlikely to actually get into your skin, let alone it's not even genotoxic, carcinogenic, or an endocrine disruptor. <laughs> These are all misleading statements. The media is really also to blame for sure because they put out these sensationalized headlines. I mean, you would think that sunscreen was gonna give you cancer based on these headlines, but benzophenone is not even a carcinogen <laughs> and let alone octocrylin. You know, unless you're a rat being force fed large, large, large amounts of benzophenone, you're fine, you're fine. Unless you're, you know, soaking yourself in sunscreen 24 seven, wrapping yourself up in saran wrap, you're not getting dangerous absorption. You're not getting absorption of benzophenone. It's just, yeah. I mean, I can't understand how a, somebody would call himself a scientist and make these kind of statements given what we know about how these compounds interact from a toxicologic perspective. And not to mention, these ingredients have been used in sunscreens for a long time with no evidence of any harm to human health. There is some kind of vendetta out there from these nonprofit groups to do away with sunscreens. I don't understand why, um, and I don't understand the you know, research that they are so hell bent on conducting in such a piss poor fashion to promote this narrative to do away with sunscreens. Sunscreen is a very important piece of protecting your skin from UV exposure, from UV damage. Those rays can, can and do cause skin cancer as well as damage the skin and compromise the health of your skin long term. Of course, sunscreen is not a shield of armor. You need to practice other sun protective behaviors, wearing a broad brim hat, not staying out too long during peak exposure times, being mindful of your sun exposure overall. It's, it's all part of a bigger picture practice for protecting your skin. Just like you wouldn't get in a car and only rely on your seatbelt to protect you. You would be following traffic laws, presumably stopping at stop signs, looking both ways. Maybe you have an airbag, your tires work. I mean, you wouldn't get on the interstate with a seatbelt on and a flat tire, I would hope. Same thing with sun protection. You want a full package of safety to protect you from those damaging UV rays. Octocrylin is safe and any potential byproduct benzophenone is not harmful to human health and is not likely to cause any issue for you. The main issue that you can develop with an octocrylin sunscreen is developing an allergy to it. But you could develop an allergy to any product that you put on your skin. It's not any more likely with octocrylin than anything else. All right, guys, I hope this video clarified the controversies around octocrylin. Please do not throw out your sunscreens that have octocrylin in them unless you have an allergy to it. Um, and if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.